All right, welcome to the next next hour. Um, this time we have a question in the meeting here. I'm going to repeat it. It's about a seemingly odd node deprecation in Next Packages. And let's just take a quick look at that. Um, if you also want to uh, be able to ask questions right away, feel free to join the meeting. And I guess the meeting chat is probably the best way to ask questions, but we also try to look at the matrix channel and the uh, YouTube live chat should all be linked from various places. All right, we got linked to the PR. So this is Node.js 14 end of life. At this date, uh, Node.js goes end of life during the release. And so this was merged. Okay, okay, a bunch of notifications for maintainers. So it was merged. I don't see any like explanation here. I don't think there is any major policy for how this should be handled. So there is, so official end of life date is in September, it was mentioned in the, um, in the channel. And so I guess we can take a look at just the general release schedule here. It's linked from the next packages issues. Uh, I'm not sure if that includes actually how long it is supported. So this just says uh, the release is at the end of May. Uh, it doesn't say how long it is supported, but so releases are supported one month past the release of the next one. So uh, because releases are twice a year, every six months, uh, releases will be supported for seven months. And so this file one will be supported until um, that would be January, well, end of December, 2023. And that is past uh, the apparent Node.js 16 deprecation or end of life. So, uh, well, there is, there is at least one convention or one something you need to make sure of and that is that stable shouldn't receive breaking changes, uh, except very rare cases of security. Uh, and so I guess, I guess in that case, it does make sense because if we do not have a warning for Node.js 16 in the first release of uh, 2305, uh, it would be back breaking backwards compatibility if we later introduced a, a throw. Although um, it depends on how the known vulnerabilities here are handled. They could throw a warning or an error. Let's actually briefly check this, how this ends up on the user side. So I'm going to copy the PR number or let me do the URL. Going to next packages. Master is already checked out. All right, increase the size a bit. Let me use the GitHub CLI. Um, by the way, those weren't API tokens, just to say. PR checkout. All right, now let's see. So the PR actually, what did it change? It added a known vulnerabilities to Node.js, and I'm guessing this is the default version. Let me up here. Well, it's parameterized. So we, well, it should be the default version. So let's just try building this. Uh, actually, yeah, let's try building this. This doesn't throw a, a warning, uh, but this is actually Node.js 18. So is the non vulnerabilities Oh, yeah, there's a conditional here, only saying that versions older than 18 will get this warning. And so we should get it when we evaluate Node.js 16, for example. Yes. So this is a, an error, tells you how you can still evaluate it, but it says uh, is marked as insecure. Uh, let's also just briefly go through this um, and just try to get it to evaluate. I believe once you do this, it won't throw 
a warning. Uh, it won't even throw a warning anymore. So environment variable works. All right. And so these are the kind of impure ways of doing this. And actually, there is a default impurity when you evaluate Nix packages with the traditional CLI. And that is, right, these files get read. And I believe we, we also wrote to these files in previous episodes just to see how it can introduce impurities. This wouldn't be the case with the new CLI, actually. So um, we could try this out. Let's edit this file here and add this to that file so we can build Node.js 16 without an error. All right. Now let's try this with the traditional CLI. All right, that works. But now let's use the new CLI. This will actually, I think this has to copy the internal packages directory into the next door, so it might be a bit slower. Uh, but yeah, this doesn't work. Uh, Flake or, yeah, I guess that's Flakes, uh, has pure evaluation mode enabled by default, so it doesn't have access to this file. Um, if we want to be, if we, we could also take a, like, how does this even work? Because uh, we don't get an error that this file doesn't exist. I believe this works. You can look at this in here. Packages top level impure. This is where all the imp impurities are hidden. Uh, so yeah, and here we can see how it works. Uh, in this case, we do a path exists. And uh, yeah, let's actually do, let's just do a config file. So we want to take a look at this file. What does actually happen here? So that's config file two. And I'm just going to do a built in start trace of config file two. This should work. Uh, it's a bit weird. Uh, let's wrap this for the better readability. Um, so once we trace this, oh, we should get an output up here. And this is expected, I think. Yeah, this is expected, although it looks very weird. Um, yes, yeah, so I believe actually if we, so the original path was, oh yeah, home deer. Uh, that's okay, that, I guess that works. So we use get env to get the home directory um, and then just depends that, but in pure evaluation mode, mode get env just returns empty strings. Uh, however, we could have also implemented this using the path literals in Nix, uh, which also support accessing the home directory directly. And I actually wonder what happens if we do this. Does it print a different path? All right, uh, cannot be resolved in pure mode. So I guess that would be the error if that were to be the case. All right. Um, so where were we? We wanted to check the warning. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, we confirmed the error exists, and this will now be the will now also exist in the next Nexus release. So yeah, let's transition over to the other topic I wanted to talk about today. Um, but always, if you have any question, feel free to interrupt or uh, write, write in the chat as well. So NixOS 2305 is being worked on right now. Um, we already checked out the issue, which lists all the milestones. Currently, we are in, I guess, the final stage, pretty much. Um, and since some time, here, the Begin Zero Hydro Failures campaign. Uh, we are in this, we want to get to zero Hydro Failures. A uh, bit more, a bit of context. Hydra is the CI that builds all the next packages, packages, and 
makes them, puts them in the cache. And so this is the, if we go to hydra.nexus.org, the next package is job set here. And in this case, uh, trunk is the most important one. That's the master branch. Uh, you might be thinking that the release branch, we want to fix the release branch here, which would be somewhere here. Okay, there's no release. Oh, so this is the next package's job stat. Uh, the actual Nexus release branch will be on the Nexus job set. Or uh, actually, that's project. I used job set wrong there. But yeah, in here, we would find the release 23051, which is the main one for the release. Um, but so when we fix a breakage only on the release channel, the package would still be broken on master and therefore in all future versions. So we first want to fix breakages on master and then backport those fixes to the release branch. Uh, yeah, and so this is the trunk job set here. And so zero Hydra failures means that we want to get to zero failures in Hydra here. And so we can see here, here are all the evaluations of the job set. And uh, well, this one isn't fully evaluated yet. We can see here that there's some question marks. Um, but on these here, we can see that slowly the failures are getting uh, rarer. So only 2,304 failures here. Um, but when I mean, you might ask what happens when we don't reach zero failures until the release, which will be, when will that be? That's actually, oh, that's actually tomorrow. I didn't realize we were that close to it. So yeah, I guess I, I, guess I might actually be a bit too late with this. In any case, in any case. So what happens is that we just mark all the packages that are still broken at the end of zero hydro failures as broken. And we do this using the broken att meta attribute. So let's say, um, let's actually go in here. Let's manually simulate this. I believe this is automated to some degree in the end. Um, this is taking a long time to load. All right, now we have the classification of all the jobs here. So I wanna get one that is still failing. Let me just pick a random one here, actually a random one that I would be able to build on my system. All right, and I guess let's do ClickHouse here. All right, so ClickHouse, apparently that's broken on master. Let me check out master. Oh, that's good, check out master. And let me get uh, reset hard head. Don't want that change to impure. Now let me build ClickHouse. All right, that should not fetch it from the cache. Uh, the cache.nexus.org, the main Nexus cache doesn't cache failures, so which is a bit unfortunate. So whenever something uh, builds like this, you never know whether Hydra actually didn't build it at all or whether it built it but it failed and didn't cache it. Uh, in this case, actually, so I don't really know how long this is going to take. So uh, we can look at Hydra here to figure it out. And we can see here, oh, duration five minutes and 16 seconds until it failed. So that would be a bit too long for the next hour here. Uh, we could also look at uh, these interesting fields down here while we're here. So this is very interesting because we can see, uh, right, so this is the current build, but a previous one was broken. And in fact, this is the first one that is broken, whereas this one is the last one before it was broken. So this, I guess this allows you to easily get a version of the package that actually builds. And we could like go here and uh, open this build and then look at, I guess this, or inputs. Yeah, inputs. 
then we could see our next packages version, this revision, it builds in that one. So we could go check out this one, next build ClickHouse, and it will just download it from the cache. That would be the, the last build that succeeded in that way. All right, but we don't really need that here. So let me go back to here and one back one more. Uh, came radar. Twelve seconds for to fail. Yeah, we can we can try that. Radar. All right, fetches some stuff. Um, something also very kind of the most important thing on these Hydra job descriptions or these builds is the log here. So here you can see the build. There's three links. Uh, they're all the log, but this one is the most useful. We can actually see the error of the build. And if you do uh, want to contribute to zero Hydra failures to fix some builds, this is an easy way to see whether a failure uh, is relevant to you, whether you think you could fix it. And so in this case, uh, for error, your version is too low. That's an interesting error. We, we might be able to fix that. Let's take a look. So we can reproduce failure locally, uh, but I wanted to show what happens when uh, zero hydro failures is over. So uh, the, uh, I guess the release team would mark it as broken. Uh, let's figure out where it is. Let's do a, I'm not sure if next edit works. It might work. Let's try this. Um, this would become a radar. Ah, uh, no, that opens the next door directory. So we can't directly edit something here. But we do get the path back from here. But you passed next packages there. Maybe you should pass current directory. Oh. Yeah, good point. I think, it, yeah, that works. So it's only a problem uh, in flags, which also copies it into the next door. So actually, this wouldn't work, or it would point to the next door directory. Also, import the entire next packages directory again into the store. Yeah. But yes, yeah, so next edit with a file flag. And the local directory, not one that is already in the next door, like my next packages. That works. So what we would do in here is set broken equals true. And now when someone tries to build this, it will just say, refusing to evaluate, it's broken. I guess similar to the previous one, we could say, uh, attempt to build anyways, because sometimes packages are marked as broken, but they actually still build. Um, yeah. All right, now let's undo this change. And actually, I'm in an older version. Oh, yeah, right. I checked out the previous version. Here, yeah. All right, but now let's let's look a bit closer at zero hydro failures. So the most details you can get about it is from a pin thread up here. The zero hydro failures. This should always be pinned for every release. And this gives a lot of details about how, like what it is, what you can do to fix it, to, to help with the approach, um, what different, like how you can find out what packages are broken. So in this case, we did it in the direct way. We went to Hydra, we found a package that was broken in the, uh, in the trunk job set. Um, but there's also useful websites to make this a bit easier. So one of them is right here by Melab. I hope I pronounced that right. And so this uh, reports by job set here again, uh, the trunk I'd say is the most important. There's also trunk combined actually. And so trunk combined that is for Nexus exclusively or uh, in that job set all the NixOS tests get run. And um, I believe there are some other NixOS specific things in there. Uh, the Nix packages trunk is for all the other platforms as well. 
Uh, well, so Nexus is only Linux. Uh, Next package is trunk. That's also for Darwin. Um, I think mainly mainly Darwin, probably. And I guess, yeah, Darwin. And so depending on what you care more about, you might pick one or the other. Um, but right, there's it's not just a Nixos release, it's also a Nix packages release. So these go kind of hand in hand. And so let me look at trunk here. Uh, we can see some platform specific failures here. Uh, and actually, yeah, let me let me go to my platform. Oh, that's not the right one. That's one. And we can see a whole bunch of jobs that failed here. Uh, here, all these are dependency failed. Let me try to find one. Well, scroll through the ones where the dependency failed, get to the first one that failed without a dependency. B package. All right. So we could look at this, try to fix this, or maybe even better pick a random one in here so we don't duplicate the effort. Um, or we could look down here at the problematic dependencies. I believe the, the, this lists dependencies in the order uh, in like which ones have the most reverse dependencies that they cause also breaking. So effectively by fixing this package, we can unfix 235, 38 packages. Uh, kind of worrisome here that actually Linux is failing on Arch Linux. Uh, but uh, these are probably also the hardest to fix, um, especially since they're on the top end. Probably most people would jump on these to, to fix them. So uh, generally, the easier packages to fix are a bit further down here. Uh, yeah. And so this is one way to find a package that is uh, broken. Another one is zh.fail. Very nice URL. This, um, oh yeah, this has useful links here. Failed without a maintainer, all failed builds, failed by maintainer. So I might go in here. I may next packages maintainer and search for my username. In Finisil, it's not here. So apparently I'm clean. There's no failed packages. Um, this is good for, right, when you're already a maintainer and you want to check that your packages don't fail. Another way to do this is that there is a script in Next Packages which does this for you. And that is uh, not this one. Is it build.nix? Actually, let me just look at my history here. Yes, yeah, so this is the command. We next build maintainer scripts build.nix, and then we pass myself as a as an argument string. And now this will attempt to build all the packages that I maintain locally. Or it will fetch them from, from the cache, of course. I hope this is documented in the next packages manual, actually. OK, and uh, all packages succeed, which aligns with the, uh, the non-match we saw on the website. So let me try to grab for arc string maintainer. It doesn't look good. Yeah, this is not documented, at least in the next package manual. All right. But yeah, so once we identified a package as broken, and let me get back to this one, the kmerator. Um, the well, the kind of first thing you want to do, and we already did that, is confirm it's broken. So I already tried this. Came Raider. Well, I marked it as broken. Let me reset that change. Try again. So yeah, this breaks. Um, we do need to make sure, though, before we jump into trying to fix it, uh, we need to make sure that we have an up-to-date master. So let me just pull this get the latest changes and try it again. 
All right, it's not cached. It's likely going to fail unless someone fixed it right away and Hydra hasn't, like, unless someone fixed it in like the previous commit and Hydra hasn't built that one yet. All right, so that fails. We still need to check something else though, and that is whether someone else fixed it already. And there might be an open pull request for that. So I actually like to search in issues and then remove the entire thing here uh, for the package. This gives you issues, open ones, closed ones, uh, kind of all the context for a package. And so in this case, we, well, we actually have this PR here, which might be related to zero hydro failures, actually. This might be the one to mark packages as broken. Ah, doesn't look like it. But yeah, so there's no PR that fixes it already. So uh, that's our... There is serial bump that might be related for some reason. This one? The top one. Oh. Uh, yeah, I, I'd imagine it's actually, this is very specific. Oh, vendors a dependency that breaks on this. Okay. We, I guess we have a lead here. Yeah, I do not know how to fix this right away, but apparently this is causing it. So actually what we could see, so yeah, we haven't checked this one out yet. So this page has more information that is the changes here. And so we don't want to click this. Uh, we would see the next packages changes from the previous to this build, but actually this would just show us the like unrelated changes that didn't really cause the breakage. Uh, instead, we want to click on the first broken build here and then click the changes. Actually, is this the same one? No, it's a different one. Cool. All right, now this, this displays the git log and actually the diff further down of all the changes that happened uh, during that time. So. One of these changes here broke the, um, what is it? Came Raider build. And so let me, I mean, an easy way to do is to search for Came Raider. No match. And then we could also search for curl because that apparently might have been the breakage. And yeah, we can see here curl uh, is indeed part of this. So we have somewhat of a lead here. Um, now to fix this, let me, so we could also do it by section to really confirm that curl was the one that broke it. Um, if you want to, well, I'm not going to go into it here. If you want to read about git by sections, you can look at man git bisect. This should explain it fairly well. All right, but now let's, let's actually try to dig into this a bit to see what we could do when a breakage like this occurs. So let's just, oh, well, we have it up there. So error your version is too low. So I would like to get a bit more context here. So I want to look at the source of the package. One way we could do this is to use next build dash A and then the dash K flag. Dash K keeps around the build directory. So you can look at it afterwards. All right, let's wait for this. And we're done. And you can see this line here is printed, keeping build directory. And now we can cd into that and see the source. We can see also environment variables, sometimes useful, and everything that the build had at this point. And so we can go into source, compat. Uh, actually, let me do like a cursive search, compat.h. Oh, that's in like source vendor github.com go curl compat. Uh, so that also hints at the fact that, yeah, vendors a dependency. So this might be fairly annoying to fix. We could probably 
Well, let's get some more context here. Error year version is too low. Actually, too low. Yeah, that works. Ah, uh, see, so yeah, if lib curl version and look at all that. Okay, this is lib curl version minor. So the update actually updated from major version seven to major version eight. Ah, uh, this. Okay, I guess I guess it just doesn't work with major version eight, which the version here, the versions here seem to indicate. So okay, we identified that this dependency, this ula uh, could go curl, probably needs an update. And so let's see actually what uh, if there's already a fix for this. So let me go to the to the source of this. And I guess I can check the file compat.h to see if anything changed. Compat.h. And five years ago it was updated. So probably not. Yeah, this is still the same. So okay, this nested dependency wasn't updated. Uh, what about the actual top level package? Maybe our camera radar package doesn't depend on this anymore in its latest version. Or maybe it has a special fix for it. So let's check the came radar sources uh, or the upstream repository. For this, I'm going to use, let me go into Nix REPL here. I'm going to load Nix packages into it. And let's look at packages, actually, game radar.home, actually, meta.homepage. This allows us to find out where it came from. Actually, same author, which makes me think that it probably also wasn't updated. Let's take a look. Oh, it was updated in, well, the repository is apparently maintained, uh, seemingly. This one, uh, 19, some time has passed. But this one is a bit better maintained, it seems like. Uh, do we have anything that might resemble this fix? I guess we can check the uh, vendors. Uh, it's not here. Where were those? Is it even vendor directly in here? Apparently not. I guess that's something with go, go to mod, go to some, something like that. Uh, yeah, I guess we found the right one here. So yeah, version is pinned here to this commit. Well, I guess it doesn't have any special patch here. Actually, it might. Let's just look at this. Oh, I did a the GitHub URL slash commit, then slash the commit hash. And in this case, 2019, uh, it, it's already mastered. So on GitHub, we can see which branches the commits are in. In this case, it's already on master. So we already checked master. So there's no patch in here. Let's see. Well, there's no pull requests. Maybe there's an issue. Came right there, error fix. Okay, there is a curl error, at least in the screenshot. Color version is too low. Okay, there's an upstream report. Uh, let's see if there's any resolution to this. Um, okay, so the upstream author doesn't have time directly. Uh, I don't want to go through all of this. Let's assume that, yeah. There's actually an uh issue in the upstream of his fork of go curl uh, so it it oh, is a the fork oh, the upstream one to, yeah and the top issue is about uh 80.0 point mm. yeah yeah okay and there's a draft peer at least to fix this uh I, well, we could try to figure out how to apply that draft peer this to the vendor dependency. This feels 
a bit too eager. Yeah, let's, I'd say let's try to instead, so apparently 8.0 doesn't work. So let's try to downgrade curl for that package. And I'm not sure if that's actually going to be easily possible, but let's let's give it a try. So let's go to the definition of kmerator. Uh, let's also use nix edit again. All right, and we can see it has a curl dependency specified up here. Build inputs curl. So that seems like it should work. I was worried that the curl might be nested in like a fetcher or some some library, uh, but this should make it fairly easy. Well, assuming we have old color curl versions available, let's check this. Let's do a nix REPL. Let's check curl tab. And it looks like we do not have older curl, curl versions available. Yeah. So yeah, that seems like for now, is really our option, an option. Uh, so what else could we do at this point? There's really not much. Curl is broken. Yeah. So yeah, this feels like a case where we actually have to mark it as broken. Uh, maybe just to kind of try to get it working. Like let's assume we still want to use this package and we are not inside Nix packages, but outside as a third-party consumer. Let's say we have our uh, test.nix file. Well, already used. Let's use t.nix. Oh, <laughs> already used. Let's use um, what was it? Kmerator. .nix. All right. Now let's assume we import Nix packages from somewhere. Uh, so this will be master from here. Actually, local directory. And packages came radar. All right, now let's build this. And this will fail as expected. So let's not wait for this. Uh, but now I want to patch curl. And so the way to do this, because it was in the arguments on top of the file. So if we go back, let's edit came radar. The curl is specified up here. These arguments up here can be overridden with dot override. And if we wanted to override the ones down here, uh, that depends on the function used here. Uh, generally, you can override them with dot override address, but uh, for example, the vendor SHA-256, probably not. Uh, you'd have to look at the documentation of build go module. Uh, so, but for now, we just need to override the curl here. So let's do that. We're going to do a dot override. And now the old attributes. And I think this should work. Yeah. So curl equals, let's just set it to throw test just to see whether it actually works. Just throwing the error is sometimes a good way to know whether you, your code is actually executed and whether you're making the change in the right place. So next build, yeah, we can see it errors. All right, but now where do we get a curl version from that, uh, the one that, a one that works? And for this, let's use Hydra as well. So I'm going to go to Hydra. I'm going to use the next packages project. And I'm going to go to the very bottom here, master branch and jobs. So when I search for curl to figure out which version it was at which point in time, actually not sure if that's easily viewable. So it would be curl, this one on Linux. Oh, it is easy, easily viewable. Very nice. So we can see here that's all curl eight, curl seven. Uh, I mean, this does get us to the same place where the job set for came Raider uh, failed for the first time or before the fir first time. Uh, but yeah, let's use this version. So I'm gonna, gonna go to the job or to the build. 
look at the inputs here and get the next packages, next packages revision here. All right, now with the revision, I'm just gonna fetch the next packages from there. I'm gonna use this, let's call this uh, old next packages. I'm gonna do a fetch tarball. Uh, URL is, this is a bit annoying. Um, Com next size next packages. You could use git flake. Yeah, I was waiting for this. <laughs> Shadow five six. I got it done. We might we might try this later. Right now we can use old next packages dot curl. Uh, actually, no, that's not quite right. Old packages. Now I'm gonna. I'm gonna ignore all the impurities again. I would like to have a pure evaluation by, by default for non-flex as well. That should be doable. Old. Can't you pass uh, dash dash pure to the next build or something like that? Yeah, let, let's try that in a bit. Um, that's that's a good question. Oh, uh, and I will, oh, I need to either do dot tar dot gz or you can also do tarball here. Slightly a bit shorter. All right, fetching next packages. Fortunately, my internet is fairly fast. It's unpacking it. I see it on the CPU up there. And done. Let's insert the right hash. And build it. All right, let's hope it doesn't error after a couple seconds now. It shouldn't. We can see curl, the version 7.88 has been fetched and it's building. So actually, yeah, how long does this take to build? Let's also figure that out. So I'm gonna go back to the Hydra build of Came Raider here. I'm gonna to go to the last successful build and look at the build time. That's only 50 seconds, so it's probably already done. And yeah, the exit is here. So yeah, that works and we have a working Came Raider. I have no idea what this actually does. Uh, I guess we could use Nix. Well, let's use Nix REPL for now, Came Raider dot meta. Let's just print the entire thing. That's really hard to read. Let's not do that. Let's print just the description. RTSP stream access tool. I have no idea what that means still, but I guess it's not for me then. There were some uh, tests that they passed, so we can assume that it works. Okay, that's that's great. Yeah, I guess that's, that's good to mention that. Ideally, uh, we should also test the package. Um, yeah, so in this case, we can't actually submit a fix for zero hydro failures. Uh, it's probably a good thing that it does just get marked as broken. Um, but yeah, but your question earlier, can we just pass something like pure or pure eval to next build? So we could try this when we do that. Uh, yeah, Yuri? Yeah, I'd like to mention that even if the only thing we can do is mark it as broken, after this research, we could actually add a comment why it is broken so that the next guy who wants to fix it, or person who wants to fix it, they don't have to repeat this research once again. They can just check, all right, that issue is still not resolved. Yeah. So we, we, nothing to do here. That is That is a very good point, yeah. So ideally, we... I'd say this is probably a, even a good pattern that we mark it as broken ourselves and then link to the relevant issues. Uh, so in this case, it would be, actually, there was one up here. This one, actually, this is the PR. Let me link to the issue. Uh, so just for now, the link, uh, build failure. Does this link the underlying one? 
Ah, uh, well. Yeah, let's link to both of these. Upstream issue doesn't build with latest curl. See these two issues. All right, and I guess let's let's actually make this as a PR. So, well, most people are probably familiar with how to make PRs, but there's always new people. So uh, first, well, we already cloned Next packages uh, at some point before. Uh, first, we need to create a branch for this. You can also commit on the master branch, but that's a bit annoying if you have multiple PRs. Uh, so recommend it, create a feature branch. I'm gonna call it fix slash camerator here. The name doesn't matter though. Uh, I think it's dash C. E. Oh, uh, I wanted to use git switch dash C. I see. Well now git switch fix camerator. All right. Now we want to commit it. So let me do a git commit. Uh, actually, add files first. So I actually have a lot of unchecked files in here. If I would use git dash git add dash a, it would add all of these, which I don't want. Uh, instead, I can use git add dash u, which will only add files that are already tracked in the git tree. All right, now git commit. Actually, I used an abbreviation here. So this will be, oh, I have a, an override in here, which I want to remove. Camerator mark as broken. All right, uh, let me remove this override thing from here. Now, I made a change to it. I want to keep the same commit though. I can do this with a git commit amend. Actually, I believe I need to add files first. Let me again add the untracked file. So it's checked here. Now I'm going to commit again, but amend to amend it to the previous commit. All right, confirm this. And now I want to. I need to push it to my own repository. Uh, to do this, I will need to add your upstream. You can do this with git remote add uh, infinicil, or I mean, usually it would be origin or upstream. It just needs to be a new name. Uh, I'm going to add my repository here. Already exists. Let me call it infinicil2. Now push dash u infinicil2 head, I think is the general syntax for this. All right, and once you have it pushed, GitHub provides a very nice link here where you can directly open a PR. So I'm gonna go here, I would open it in a separate window. Let me move it in here. All right, open a pull request. So, well, two important things. One of them is, uh, well, the description ideally describe the changes, but in this case, it's obvious. Uh, but we should link to the zero hydro failures issue, fix for zero hydro failures, or let's call this mark as broken for zero hydro failures with a reason for zero hydro failures. Um, yeah, then we need to link to the zero hydro failures issue, which is um, right here. All right, uh, also things done. So I built the package. Let me just cross this. I think this is a bit over the top in many cases. Doesn't uh, completion work when you hash? Type hash and then like. Oh yeah, that. Sometimes it's a bit hard to get the right completion. I'm noticing zero hydra failures, or ZHF doesn't work. Zero hydra. Okay. Nah, it's a bit it's a bit messy that auto completion. So one of the things we want to do is to actually backport this to the uh, stable branch. 
uh, well, it's not stable yet, but to the release branch, uh, we can do this by adding the backport label to the PR. I believe every Next Packages uh, maintainer should have access to do this. Uh, if not, uh, ask someone else or the release team will do this for you. So in this case, backport to that release. And I think that's about it. So yeah, live PR creation, here we go. In the setHF link, you will also see all of the PRs that did the same thing. So down here, we can see all of them link to this issue here. So it's, it's easy to see for the release team which ones are zero hydro failures. I believe there's also a tag that is sometimes added. I'm not sure how persistent that is. Yeah, setHF fixes. It's apparently a tag. All right. And well, in this case, we can fix it, but uh, just mark it as broken. The process would be the same if you were to fix it. And questions yeah. and comments. Questions and comments? What do you mean? Uh, there are questions and comments in the Jitsi. Oh, in the Jitsi. Uh, oh, right here. So uh, could we work on maybe the old, on making the old curl available? Um, why we can apply the fix with the override that Sylvan just showed? Ah, uh, yeah. So the, the fix that we did here fetches an older next packages uh, in order to get the curl from the older next packages. And we cannot do this in next packages for, I guess the main reason, one of the main reasons is just that uh, essentially all code that you evaluate has to be in next packages directly. Um, that's the, well, partly the IFD re uh, restriction, but also, so IFD is import from derivation. That means you can't import from a derivation like this. So like this would be disallowed because this is a derivation. This is an import. Um, yes, that's one reason. But also Hydra doesn't even allow fetches at evaluation time. So there's a, a restricted, uh, I think it's restrict eval or something like this, which can restrict which URLs you can fetch from at evaluation time. I believe this is documented in the next.conf man page, restrict eval. Yeah. And or to URIs outside of allowed URI. And yeah, if you look in Hydra, this is set to something fairly restrictive. Or maybe even the default of empty. Uh, yeah, and so the alternative would be to try to make the old curl available again. And that is sometimes done. So if we look at, uh, for example, I mean, Python is an easy example. Python, uh, we can see Python 2 is available. Python 3, multiple versions of Python 3. Um, and that is done when you need to support the older versions a bit longer. On YouTube, we have a comment, what terminal emulator are you using? I'm using Kitty. That is this one right here. Um, yeah, so uh, in this case, we really need to decide uh, whether it makes sense to support an older version of curl. Um, I guess curl is a fairly core package and the fact that we've been able to go kind of so long without multiple versions seems to be a sign that we shouldn't introduce a new one. Um, yeah, uh, but we could also, if we actually wanted to do this, we might go look at the curl definition to see how complex it is. Uh, so let's do an next edit of curl. So in this case, I mean, curl is a fairly core package. So as expected, the definition is not very small. Uh, in case we do have multiple versions, we would ideally like to reuse as much code as possible. And we can, for example, see this as at Nix. So Nix packaged in Nix packages itself. 
uh, let's do package management here. We have a comment.next file. And this is kind of common to all the versions packaged in next packages. So this has some, some generic code here that can handle all of these different versions. And in the default.next, we can see all of these versions declared fairly easily. So we can reuse a lot of the code. And we'd have to do the same for curl. Uh, we would probably also have to talk to the maintainers of curl. So when we, like, let's look at curl, the maintainers here, currently uh, Lovec 323. I, I'd imagine other people might also be involved in the curl maintenance. We could check this with the git log as well. So we could look at git log, actually, what was the file? Um, actually, is there a way? Now well, let's do it like this. Next eval dash f dot and then curl dot meta dot position. This way we can get the path to the file out here. Now let's do, well, I need to strip this to only the local one and then I can do git log. Um, I believe just pass the file path here. Yeah. This way you can see who, who changed the file over time. Uh, yeah, well, we also have comment that Alacrity uh, was also, is also recommended. I actually switched from Alacrity to Kitty. I'm not sure why I did that. Um, you could probably find it in my system configuration log. Uh, all right, uh, we are out of time. Uh, we didn't get to the pure evaluation question. Um, short answer to that one is that it doesn't quite work. It's it's a bit more is required to make that work. We might be able to see that in the future or might have covered it in the past as well already. All right, thanks everyone for joining.